if you want. Cytokine, it's not allowed to touch this kind of tracks because that will damage it. It's start going to uh, touch it. And no smoking, no eating inside. At the end of the tour, I'll give you one minute to take some pictures, but before that, it's not allowed to even yeah. take or to take pictures, even if it was uh, without Karstic dissolution and deposition processes that take place in calcareous caves create stalactites and stalagmites. These sometimes merge and form columns. The process sometimes also produces helictites and corallotites. A cave forms through an extended geological minerals, plant remains, and animal skeletons at the bottom of an ancient sea. These accumulate layer upon layer and turn into rocks composed mainly of limestone. Nature, however, did not preserve the neatly ordered layers in their original state. Powerful forces originating within the earth pushed and pulled, uplifted, folded, and broke them. The layers of rock that were uplifted form today's mountains. That, for example, is how the Judean mountains in our country were formed. the soil and dissolves the carbon dioxide which originated in the decomposition of organic matter. Carbonic acid forms and attacks the carbonate rocks. The concentration of acid is minimal, but in terms of geological time, its cumulative effect is significant. The runoff water carves various shapes in the rock's surface. Rugged protrusions and depressions, columns and small hollows. This process of shaping carbonate rocks by water is called a karstic process, named after a region in Yugoslavia in which the phenomenon is common. The water continues to penetrate and seep into the rocks through every fissure and joint, widening these passages and carving out a subsurface groundwater drainage system. Following an uplift of mountains or a drop in sea level, the cavities formed are left as voids below the Earth's surface. These are called calcareous caves. Rain continues to infiltrate the soil and to dissolve the carbonate rocks. The water penetrates down through the roof of the cave where it remains suspended. Now the process reverses itself. From the drops of water, carbon dioxide is discharged. Some of the water evaporates and carbonate material is deposited as a thin ring marking the circumference of the original drop of water. Thus, drop after drop, millions of times over thousands of years, a calcareous cylindrical form develops from the ceiling downward, resembling an icicle, but hollow in the middle, like macaroni or a straw. Its diameter is the same as that of the drops of water. This is the stalactite. Stalactites and stalagmites tend to develop in clusters under the cracks in the ceilings, since most of the water drips down these fissures. When a change occurs in the flow of water through the stalactite, or when its hollow center becomes blocked, the water runs off its surface, thickening it by the same carbonate deposition process. The drop slides down the length of the stalactite and falls to the floor of the cave. It again deposits more carbonate, and thus, Beneath the stalactite, a similar form begins to grow, projecting upwards from the floor. This is the stalagmite. Sometimes, the stalactite and stalagmite meet and grow together, merging into a column. Where the process continues over a long period, rows of stalactites and stalagmites will merge with each other, to form a curtain or wall, dropping from the ceiling to the floor of the cave, and partitioning the large cavity into rooms and halls. The soil and rocks contain iron oxides, which are absorbed by the drops of water. The various types and concentrations of oxide stain the stalactites and stalagmites different colors. Very 
variations in the shapes of the stalactites attributed to differences in deposition processes. If the walls of the cavern are tilted, the water running off them will form flat stalactites, which are known as elephant ears. A wet stalactite sometimes develops thin horns that grow in a disorderly way. This uncontrolled development stems from changes in the electric field surrounding the drops of water. These forms are called electites. Puddles sometimes form in depressions on the floor of the cave and get covered over by calcareous deposits. Sometimes the carbonate crystallizes in an unordered manner. The stalagmites push out in all directions and form coral-like aggregates called coralatites. Sometimes an earthquake occurs. Masses of rock from the roof of the cave will collapse, together with the stalactites falling to the floor of the cave. New fissures form in the roof. Then, very quickly, which in geological terms means a few thousand years, the water welds the heaps of rock fragments on the floor, turning them into blocks of rock. Some of them are again covered by new stalagmites. Sometimes, stalactites will deteriorate because the flow of water through them becomes blocked. These are the ways in which the continuous, uninterrupted processes of dissolution, deposition, and weathering have always operated and will continue to operate. Karstic dissolution and deposition processes that take place in calcareous caves create stalactites and stalagmites. These sometimes merge and form columns. The process sometimes also produces helictites and coralitites. May 1968. A routine blast in the quarries of Hartu exposed a cave, opening the door to a wondrous world that had been hidden for millions of years. Please be considerate of future visitors and observe the following rules. Do not stray off the paths. Do not touch or stroke the stalactites or stalagmites. Be quiet. Do not smoke. Photographing is strictly forbidden except on Fridays. Obey the instructions of the rangers. The Nature Reserves Authority wishes you a pleasant and enjoyable visit. Okay, okay so you have to move, so please uh, keep up with me, keep up with the group, don't stay behind, we have to stay together through all the tours. Uh, here we can touch the wax, what's inside, and no pictures, no video taking. Uh, can I say that? It's a little bit